What's up, mob? Hey, how we doing? So I, there's some huge news that I'm really happy about, but who's even more happy is Sophia Phelps. Yes, Sophia says she's going to drop that later in this episode, but it's big and you're going to want to hang on for it. And then I also want to touch on a few riders must win is one of the most overrated things in sports, but I'm going to hit you with a few guys that must have a good performance in San Diego because it's getting rough for these guys. But remember, subscribe. They judge us or like they decide what videos to push out by how many subscriptions you have. So the more subscribers we get, the more that the videos will do well and the mob will grow and we can keep fighting the establishment. So let's get into this, guys. You need people like me so you can point your fucking fingers and say that's the bad guy. So the first rider is this guy is he needs a performance, a good performance, so bad. It's getting it's getting downright ugly for Christian Craig. And I'm not just talking about the onesie that he was wearing at Anaheim One. So last year was his debut as a full-time 450 rider. And he came out and was very lackluster. And then he had those horrendous injuries. Then he stepped up with courage. And I respect that he did this. But he went to the destinations because nobody else would go. And he just did not look good. He, I mean, it was bad. But I still, like I said, I commend him for doing that. He's uh, he's a guy I like a lot, and I really want to see him do good, but it's getting downright ugly with these results. Now, if he had something like a podium early last year before he got hurt, the problem is he didn't look that good then. Uh, he has struggled in the whoops. Whoops have been, throughout his career, that's been his plus. That's his bonus. That's his, you know, trick in the bag that he could always pull out. He could always fly in the whoops, but he has not been able to. And you can't keep blaming the bike. Now, yes, that bike had some issues with whoops, Malcolm included, but Chase Sexton seems to be doing just fine. And he's on that same platform. And there's other guys that are doing well. Plessinger's doing really well. So you can't blame the bike anymore. Christian Craig is getting dangerously close to that getting fired in season realm. And that would be disastrous. That would, that would, end, that would be the end of his career. But he's got to do something. He's got to show something. He's got to get a fast time, a heat race win. He's got to get a top five. Like he's got to get something and get it soon. Because if he keeps having these horrible finishes, like, you know, you can't keep DNFing and pulling off and doing the things that he did at, at like Anaheim one. He could be in the Thomas Covington situation. There's so many guys that have been fired mid season. It's rare. But it, you want to have a career killer, get fired mid-season. And Christian Craig is getting close to that area. So he needs a performance, something fierce. Guys, if you need some supplements, you hit your head, head over to the Coach Rob store. He's got supplements to heal concussions. He's got supplements to make your immune system better. But yeah, check out Coach Rob store. Epic Garage Designs. You guys know Epic. Epic will make your garage look like a Barrett Jackson showroom for a reasonable price. Go to epicgaragedesigns.com. Now, the next guy on my must list is Malcolm Stewart. Him, not so much. He missed the entire season last year, but he's kind of showed a little bit of flashes this year already. And being that he's Malcolm, he's going to get a little bit longer rope. And he has had some performances prior to this. He, you know, he was, he's got a podium for this team or like he's been a 450 podium guy before. So he's got some results to kind of rest on. Craig does not. Craig does not have any podiums back in the bag. Malcolm's going to have a longer rope and I don't see him getting fired mid season, but dang, could he use a finish? He needs it really, really bad. And that would, uh, that would alleviate a lot of pressure and, and get that confidence back. Cause you know, he was out all last year and it's, it's really hard to get back in the flow and it's not like he's going to save it you know, and his, his only time to do this is supercross because they get to outdoors. Clearly that's not his specialty. He doesn't like that. He's not good at that. And he doesn't even, I don't think he really wants to go outdoors. So if he doesn't get something going in supercross, will he even make the playoffs at, you know, super motocross? Cause outdoors gives you far more points that qualify you towards super motocross than supercross. So we shall see, but Malcolm needs something now. If you need some goggles, hit up RideStrap. They got the Let's Go Branding goggles. Hit up RideStrap.com. If you're shipping anything via truck, use Precision Transport. They have customer service 
and they support motocross. So hit up pretransport.com. Now, the final guy on my must list, he's a no-brainer. Uh, it's Joe Schmoda. He's come over to Honda with all that pressure, and they hired him to win. They didn't hire him to just podium and be in the mix. They hired him to win. He's filling the Lawrence's shoes. They won everything. This will be the first championship that Honda hasn't won in this. Well, no, I take that back. Uh, Deegan broke that with the Super Motocross Championship, but they still expect to win, in particular, whichever coast Joe rode. So if he doesn't get something going, the pressure is just going to build and it's going to get worse. With that said, I think Joe's going to have some good good finishes. It's so early in the season. We could have another mutter. There's things that could happen. And somebody brought it up in the, in the comments section and they made a great point. They talked about, you know, the three guys that are, you know, that he's really chasing in the points, which are RJ, Jordan, and Kitchen. Two of those guys have a history of throwing it away. So it's not over. Joe just needs to get some momentum and he needs it now. All right, guys, now to my new favorite segment. Sophia Phelps is a badass person she is a ridiculous rider she's so good and i'm so stoked to have her sharing her opinions with us and we got some huge news regarding women's motocross but i'm gonna let her tell it so here you go sophia hi guys it's sophie again i'm excited to talk to you about the wmx pro series that has recently been announced actually just last friday um, by mx sports and before I say anything, yes, I am in a school classroom. I go to school at Utah Tech University, and um, I didn't have a whole lot of time the past couple of days to do anything about a video, so I had some spare time between classes and figured I'd find an empty classroom. So pardon the classroom behind me. But um, for those who are unaware, let me just explain real quick. Um, MX Sports did bring back the WMX series. They're very excited to do this year. This year, I think a lot of women are amped about it, um, and for good reason. I grew up watching Ashley Filick and Jessica Patterson, Sarah Whitmore, Tara Geiger, all these awesome women competing in pro women's motocross here in the US. And they had a full series that ran with the men at all the outdoor nationals. I was actually there for the last one of like that you know, the whole series, which was in 2012 at Lake Elsinore. So I remember watching and I would have been nine years old at that point and I just loved it. It was so cool. Um, and I had dreamed of doing that someday. So then they slowly like brought it down to a Triple Crown and then it was um, not with the men. And then it, you know, they just changed it up a bunch. And um, basically since 2012, it hadn't been the same. They completely disbanded it after I believe 2018. Um, which was really unfortunate and we haven't really had a pro series to work towards. Um, I've described it in the past as uh, when you're training for something that's not there, it feels like you're sprinting towards a dead end road. Like you're just trying as hard and um, as hard as you can to prepare for something that's not there. So I feel like it's such a blessing that they've given us this opportunity to race this pro series. So they've given us eight rounds and they are at um, five Florida Jamager Nationals, uh, decently large, you know, ranging in different sizes, but uh, five Amateur Nationals and then three that are at pro races. So two of them are the same weekends as pro nationals at pro nationals. I believe they run them Sunday afterwards. And then the other, the last remaining one is at the Pastrana Pro Challenge. So lots of really cool races and opportunities for this. It starts in March and the last one is in October. Um, really really cool and i'm i mean i hope you can tell just how excited i am about this um one comment of mine is that they are all east coast the furthest west race that we have on the schedule is in wortham texas uh, which to give you an idea i'm in utah and that is a 24-hour drive from where i am so or pardon me that one might be 20. I believe that one's 20. It's it's a thousand miles. Um, these races average 1,500 miles from where I am. So for those who live in SoCal, which is you know has been in the past known as the heart of motocross, they have a ways to drive. Now I can understand if MX Sports is saying the bulk of the women's racers are on the East Coast. Totally fine. Let's get the numbers there and let's um, let's see what this series can do. I think it's going to be really cool, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. I think. Um, it's really cool that they're letting us girls and women go out there and show what we can do. So 
Um, I really hope that other girls and women are excited about this as I am. Um, as far as my plans for it, uh, right now I'm trying to work out some plans to make sure I can get to all the rounds. We'll see what we can do about that. Like I said, they're all very far away. Um, but also, like I said, it's very hard to complain because we finally do have a series. So I'm working on getting to the races, um, but mostly I'm just stoked because we finally have something to grab onto and something to sprint towards instead of a dead end road. So very, very cool opportunity. And I'm grateful to MX Sports and to everybody who has put this together because it should be pretty cool. I mean, this is what I've dreamed of for years. So there you go. There's my take on this new WMX series. What do you guys think? Uh, listen, I am the biggest critic there is probably of MX Sports and their hypocrisy and their greed. And hearing Sophia thank them so much kind of made me throw up in my mouth, but she's kind of right. This is something they didn't have to do and they're doing, and I got to give credit where credit is due. I'm stoked. It's not what I would like for a women's series, but you got to start somewhere. You've got to start somewhere. And I would love to see it piggyback with the outdoor nationals, but we got this, this is a start. And now we can build some women to get enough. Cause listen, women's sports works. Um, some sports it does, some sports it doesn't. I believe in motocross. It actually, it, it really would. I loved watching Jessica Patterson and Ashley Filek, and I wish they would have televised it more. But people are correct in the sense that we need more higher caliber women so you don't have, you know, a girl that looks like she can barely get around the track, and then you have a girl like Sophia just flat hauling. Um, but that will grow, but we need a series to give these girls something to shoot for to get there. So I absolutely love it, and Sophia's awesome. And she'll be back. She's guys support her. She's brought to us by Rocky Mountain MC. That's her sponsor. And she'll be doing videos whenever she feels like it. So, all right, guys. And I, <clears throat> I got this from Austin Searle. And I just, I couldn't help it. I wanted to show this. This is the youngest mob member we have. So here you go. Thanks, guys. Subscribe. I'll catch you later. You can get in between there. And I'll talk about those guys in a second. But I'm kind of frustrated with Joe. And I understand Say, it wasn't Tootsie mob. the bike broke. But it